explain to me the Fox Disney stuff that goes on in Deadpool. What is that all about? Okay, so Marvel, obviously, a long-standing comic book, and all of these characters stem from the comics that have been going on since, you know, like the 20s, the 30s, right. quite old. So Stan Lee is one of the progenitors of it, and, and like Spider-Man, that sort of stuff will have come out. Maybe the 40s, that sort of sort of era so marvel itself have been going on a bit bit longer uh, i think action comics is where dc came from and that's so superman would have been a slightly older um but i don't think that i'm not sure if action comics was older than marvel as an institution but most of the famous sure. characters came around stan lee's time so you've got these characters marvel has a you know an apex in terms of popularity through comics in probably from the 40s to the 60s uh, and then following that is the first wave of like superhero films dc really set the the tone with this because some of the biggest films within the first wave of comic book films were like your your supermans and your batmans in in the 70s and 80s right um marvel kicks on a bit in like the 80s and 90s but it's really kind of tv movie versions of things like the fantastic four and the spider-mans mm -hmm. and kind of systematically they lose the rights marvel starts to lose a lot of money making poor business decisions and sells off their most famous characters one by one right. <laughs> until you get to the point where you're in the start or the middle of the 2000s and marvel's kind of on its last legs in terms of the amount of the amount of characters it actually owns right so it's it's most popular characters spider-man x-men fantastic four they're owned by other properties. Now, okay. Spider-Man owned by Sony and still actually owned by Sony. Fox owns a lot of the other ones. So some of, I mean, we won't go into detail. I want to be careful of spoilers here because sure, I know there'll yeah. be some cameo references. This is more so, just cursory anyway. so I'll just give you, um, I won't go into detail about who people that you might see, but some of the, the big hitters, and, and let's say X-Men as an example, that's one of, marvel's flagship properties and fox owns it back in the early part of the 2000s and fox really drives some very successful films during that time so you got your x-men's and um, really they kind of do a lot to drive the 21st century comic book movie boom which marvel capitalizes on in 2008 when it releases uh, yeah. iron man so Really, the, the, the first driver of that is Fox, and it's got your X-Men, it's got the Fantastic Fours that come out. These all do very well. And then in 2008, Marvel relies on one of the last big characters that it has, Iron Man, and really pumps in a massive effort into that. So did they do anything? Was it Marvel itself that made Iron Man? It wasn't with Disney or with Fox or with anyone. So Marvel made Iron Man in 2008 as its first MCU film. Right. Disney purchased Marvel in 2009. Right. And um, I don't know how long before Disney like really, you know, became the driver of of the movies as they were released yes. or not how much it was kind of the Marvel team first. And um, but the MCU obviously became the 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 dominant force in film for the 21st century at that point. Mm -hmm. Um and Iron Man was was really like a gamble that spectacularly succeeded. Oh my god! And, and you know what? It deserved it. What a, I love that film. Yeah, and then what you see now is kind of the rise and falls of of an empire, effectively, because twenty first century Fox at the start of the two thousands riding very high on the X Men series. By the point that Marvel is at its apex, which is the twenty tens, um, all the way up to the end of the Infinity Saga you really see the downturn of not only Fox, but some of the other um, expanded universe properties that are outside mm -hmm. of Marvel. So, for instance, your DC has very, very checkerboard hit or miss in terms of the amount of high-quality movies it released um, and some real whiffs. Uh, you also have things like the... Um, horror universe which i can't remember exactly what it's called but had things like the mummy and dracula untold <laughs> and the invisible man like at this point i mean harry potter starts to really expand its universe as well marvel drives this whole let's just pump out as many films as possible and we'll all be on our own island of different 
I don't even know what you call them. These these universe islands that we seem to have in the yeah. 2010s. And basically what Disney has started to do is round them off and, and one by one. Acquired. Has basically them. acquired it until Disney's, you know, the big owns. We yeah, own, we own okay. everyone. So there was a downturn in the 2010s. I mean, one of the first to work closely with them was Sony, who give the rights to Spider-Man in some sense while still retaining them. Yes. Uh, but obviously Fox had miss after miss after miss, like the X-Men, the Fantastic Four that came out in the mid-2010s were panned. Um, the X-Men started to really kind of downturn, and they reference it in this, but there is you know one film in particular that, that stands out and does very well, um, and it's seen kind of as almost an end of an era for, for Fox. Um, Deadpool is probably the only other shining light in that time which was a massive sleeper out of nowhere how did that happen here uh, and so then we get to this point where disney buys 21st century fox and now we're in a position where deadpool is kind of the crossover to explain it and and they literally explain what is happening through the film <laughs> like the film is for sure yeah there's tons of references i mean that's mm. why i've been interested to kind of get that because there's uh i don't want to spoil anything so if you've not watched it and you want to then stop here but um there's a scene where it actually feels kind of respectful a little bit at times in in a deadpool yeah. kind of way where you know they'll see the fox what would you even call it it's like the logo but yeah, the big physical true, yeah. 3d one in the void in the dust and they're mm. kind of quite polite about it or whatever and uh you know as somebody who's never watched who's never followed any of this drama mm. none of that made sense to me really yeah right okay. it was it kept referencing it and i was like okay i can kind of tell what's going on a bit here but mm. if you get a bit if you had a bit of an understanding for that it was actually that those were part of the highest points of the film yes. for me like referencing that and and it is a bit of a love letter to Fox. Um, and those are films which are very cherished. That's certainly the, the good ones. And even some of the bad ones, like they, they give them their due as well. Uh, thank you so much for listening, everyone. Um, we're going to move on to our plot review section. Mm, if you've made yeah. it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, yeah, thank you for listening to that. We're going to absolutely head on charge into some spoilers now. And there's a yes. bloody lot of them. So um, you have been warned.